Hello and welcome to our unit on Diego Rivera, bringing the people's art to the modern world. Now before I tell you about Diego Rivera, first let's talk about the artist we were learning about last time. We were learning about Pedro Linares Lopez, a folk artist from Mexico City, and he's the one who invented alebrijes. Now, he had already learned paper mache craft from a traditional source, so he had been doing that for some time. But then, when he was in the hospital, he had a dream, and it gave him an idea for something new. In his dream, he visited a forest, and there were all these crazy creatures there saying, Alebrijes, Alebrijes. So when he woke up, he had the idea to make those creatures from his dream, and no one had done that before. So it was really a kind of modern folk art. He did not learn it from his ancient ancestors, right? It wasn't passed down to him. He got to add his own ideas, and other people really liked it. So it caught on, and it became a new kind of modern folk art. Well, now is the time we can start talking about his friend, Diego Rivera. That's right. Pedro Linares and Diego Rivera were actually friends. And Diego was already a pretty famous painter at this time. And he really loved the alebrijes that Pedro was making. Here's some pictures of Diego. He was a painter. That's him as a young man. And then as he got older and maybe a little chubbier, uh, there's his wife. So Diego Rivera and his wife, Frida Kahlo, they were both artists living in Mexico at that time, and they were super interested in the folk art that was going on there. In fact, everybody in the world was interested in the art coming from Mexico at that time. It was really cool. There she is. She's uh, standing next to some of the alebrijes, and she's wearing traditional clothes from that time. Well, We'll talk more about Frida later. Let's talk about Diego. He started by doing fine art, and these are paintings that are meant to be hung up in people's art galleries or museums. You can see it's very realistic looking. When he was studying art, he went to Europe, and he got to hang out with some Cubists. You might remember uh, some famous Cubists that we talked about before like Pablo Picasso. Does this work remind you of that? But when he came back to Mexico, he started getting back into realism, pictures that look like something, and he was also very interested in the struggles of the people that were going on right then at that time. He began to study the ancient murals that were on old buildings, like we're talking ancient civilizations like the Aztec and the Maya, the Otomi people that we learned about before, right? In some cases, their old buildings were left behind with paintings on the walls, and he thought they were fascinating. So, Diego, he loved to paint on the walls too. He loved to paint murals. That's what those are called, murals. And uh, his painting here is a dedication to all of Mexico's different indigenous cultures. If you look at these people, they don't all dress the same or have the same hairstyle. And actually, they don't even speak the same language. Here is a map of all the indigenous cultures that were living in Mexico and they called it their home, right? This is before all the people learned to speak Spanish. When did that happen? Well, it was later on during a period called colonization. That's when, um, in this case, people from Europe, and in, we're talking about Spain here, they started to move over to North America and Central America and South America. So all those countries in green there uh, started to speak Spanish because the people who colonized them made them change their language. 
So that might not sound too good, having somebody move into your home and uh, tell you you have to learn a different language and also work for them. Uh, doesn't sound too great. So when Diego Rivera was painting his pictures about what was going on in his country, he included stuff like that. He has many themes or main ideas in his paintings. And uh, here's two versions of the same picture. He made a couple versions of it. And this deals with oppression. That is being uh, bullied by someone who has power over you. Uh, that's a pretty strong theme here. One of the other themes in his paintings is the idea of resistance or fighting back against oppression. When people aren't treating you right, standing up to it. He also had themes like organizing, which is a pretty big idea, and that's where people come together to solve the problems that they are facing. You can see in this big picture, these people organized, they came together and they're giving out food and medicine, they're trying to help each other get through the hard times. That's important. Celebrating was another theme in his work. He would show people celebrating at festivals. Here we've got some Day of the Dead festivals here. We also have pictures of the flower festival, the maize or corn festival. I see people harvesting the corn and also making tortillas out of it. That's cool. Working together was another one of the big ideas in his work. This is a painting he did on the wall inside of a museum in America. They asked him to come and paint this for them. And you can see a lot of people working together to make this happen. I can see there's Diego in the middle sitting on the bench and painting. And around him are all the people that helped make the building, the people that designed the building. That's really cool. So you can see a lot of these themes again and again in his work. People working together, indigenous people working, uh, resisting oppression, and people just living side by side. This huge mural has a lot of those ideas all put together into one big picture. You can see all kinds of people here. You can even see Diego as a child up in the front row there. And there's Frida Kahlo standing behind him. That's very interesting. So when we're studying artists like Diego Rivera, we can see that folk art and indigenous cultures made a huge impact on him as an artist. And that made a huge impact on art all over the world. What influences do you see in your life from indigenous cultures? Perhaps you can see some traces of it in your life today. There's still people out there celebrating their traditional customs, wearing traditional clothes, and fighting for their rights. Well, I hope you had a good time. Please uh, leave a comment in the discussion below, and I'll see you next week.